And when I got to be seven feet tall, I went back to everybody that pushed me around and I beat the hell out of them. And they deserved every beating they got, just like I deserved every beating I got when I was a little guy. Daniel Bryan reminds me of myself when I was a little guy, and I despise him. I'm gonna make sure Daniel Bryan goes back to where he belongs. On the shelf, beaten, battered, bruised, and retired. And he will never, never cast a shadow over me or anybody else again. Yes, yes, yes. What's good, everyone? Welcome to let me get the let me get my mic straight. Welcome to the A Show with Justin and Meals. This is your host, Justin, of course, with my other host right on the other line, Jamil Meals. What's popping? Yo, what a crazy day to be on the internet. <laughs> like, what this, a- has been a, this, this has been a wild and crazy day on the internet. Um, it's been a wild and crazy week for the internet. You know, I thought the internet peaked with Soulja Boy versus Chris Brown, but this Kanye thing is just like <laughs> the, whoa. The, the the Kanye um, the Kanye thing is just the Kanye thing is is just wild. Well, I, I'm not even disappointed. Like, listen, the, I wrote it off on the, the Donald Trump day. Yeah, it popped up again here. And now it's like, <sighs> it's I, I don't even, I don't know what to say. It's a know? lot. It's a lot. It's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of baggage that I, I don't think anyone has any clear thoughts because everything is just so cluttered with all the, it's just the tweets keep coming in and everyone says he's okay. But it's like, these tweets don't sound, I mean, they sound, I mean, but who, who knows? They're erratic. Yeah. And, and they're they keep trying to say he's not erratic. And these tweets are erratic as fuck. And I hate to like, you know, bring this to it. You know, our, our show isn't the show where we do this, you know, right. where we talk about this. But I mean, we're both African American, we're both black. Right. I think our audience will appreciate it, at least a, a touch on. Yeah. But this uh, isn't what our show is gonna be about. No, 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 no. This is I think it's just we're we're seeing it live and in person. And also I'm like, I'm eating lunch finally, because today my actual life is crazy. Wow. And <laughs> what a life. Well, actual life is crazy, but, you know, it, it, it's just crazy. You know, Kanye comes back, he announces albums, he says he loves everyone. But it's like between these these landmines, he puts in, you know, things that actually hurt people. Right. And I think that for, for a lot of people, this is shaking them to reality, regardless of how disappointed you are with him or whatever. Like, this is the reality. This is the reality that we're in, like. That we have to stop putting so much faith in these types of people. And even this even extends into, I mean, we talk about like wrestlers like Randy Orton and, and, and AJ Styles and stuff like that, where it's like, you have to separate the person from you know, the reality. Like you have to change, you have to make a decision on what side of the fence you stand on and how right. deep it is. Like, listen, Randy Orton, he, he goes wild on, on Twitter and I don't knock anybody for not supporting that guy. AJ Styles mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't do that by by you know by association you know even though we're, we're we're all guessing I don't think he's actually ever come out and said anything about anything but being a flat earther but right. like it's just a, it's and that's just like that's that's such a it's a it's kind of a false equivalency they're not as big as Kanye West but to have someone as big and um and and kind of prominent and influential and prominent as Kanye West come out and make these statements and. Uh, basically put his line in the sand. Like, this is something that I, that I figured was coming for a very long time, ever since we saw him at Trump Towers looking, yeah. like, a gold, looking like a golden lord. But it was like, I said it, I was like, he was going to come back to Twitter and you guys are going to forgive him. And then it's like, I didn't know he'd burn the whole fucking farm. You know, I didn't know he'd, he, he wouldn't just apologize. He would just double down on it. I mean, 
he's saying he loves Trump and, and, and that's his brother and, you know, that, that he loves everyone and we can't, you know, I don't agree with his politics, but I still love him and shit like that. But it's like there are certain statements that are really above love or below love and that are unexplainable with that with that equivalency to it. Like, love, this isn't love. This isn't something that this isn't some that's not something that that man stands for, you know, absolutely. And, and there are people and companies and, and all types of things that stand so firmly against him. So if you stand against this person, you know, how do you separate the man from the art? I'm not knocking anybody who chooses to support the man's music. I'm just asking people to take a, a good long look at who the man is inside. And right. I think right. that will affect how I listen to the guy's music just the things he's gone through and all this other stuff, man. But you you know what? I don't want to, we, we don't want to get on a full rant about Kanye West on the A show yeah. um, because there is definitely big things coming in the WWE. I mean, we've got the, the greatest Royal Rumble. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be tomorrow. So, you know, secure yes. your spot, secure, make sure you book the conference room for six hours because you're going to need it. Um, uh, we have we've had Raw and SmackDown this week, which have been you know one. I think it's you know so and so shows like it's a to me SmackDown seemed to be the better show this week. If we had to go, uh, <clears throat> SmackDown to me was the better show, and I think what we'll do uh, in this episode is we'll go through the uh, the shows and then we'll talk about Greatest Royal Rumble, and I think that. Uh, that's the strongest thing we could do. I, 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 was there any big, huge, uh, huge news this week that you want to talk about? So, um, you know, I've been I've been very loosely following TNA. Um, very loosely. Oh yeah, they had a they had a pay per view. They had they a pay per view. They had a pay per view. I'm it's immediately escaping my name right now. I think it's called Redemption. I want to it's say called Redemption. Redemption. Yeah. It's called Redemption. Mm-hmm. Um, Austin Aries, who held all the belts, which to me is still not a good idea. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a good idea when Kurt Angle held all the belts. It's not a good idea <laughs> when any one wrestler holds all the belts. It just kind of it it makes kind of everyone else look stupid, and it makes I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a fully thought through. You could do way more um, putting over multiple people than you can just one person, especially to me, Austin Aries, who to me, I'm just not really a fan of. Um, but <laughs> you've never been a fan of Austin. I, I you, you, even when he was at NXT and everyone popped for you, you were like, who is this midget? <laughs> even in his pretty much, even in his, like his past TNA run and just the things I would see. And I was just like, why are people, I don't get this. Like he, did, I remember he did a corkscrew elbow drop and I was just like, what was the point of that? Like, what's the point of not just doing a regular elbow drop? Like, that that just made no sense to me. Just a corkscrew elbow drop. And, and the thing is, it's just like a lot of things didn't make sense. He just seems like a very indie guy, just like a very indie, beloved, independent guy. But it there never seemed to be like a true method to his madness or connection with me. But, you know, he lost to TNA champ to, I believe, Pentagon. Pentagon, that's already been undone because literally the night later at the tapings for this week's episode, Austin Aries won the belt back. Yeah. So, you know, TNA, you know, or sorry, Impact Wrestling. Sorry, I need to stop calling them TNA. It's Impact Wrestling. Um, but that happened in, you know, in Impact News. Um, let's see. We had other news outside of the, uh, not sort of outside the realm. It's still WWE related. Um, Fox Sports reported. And the only reason I'm noted. Noting this is just because my Twitter blew up and I tweeted it. Um, Brock Lesnar's deal. WWE is paying him $127,000 per appearance and $637,000 per match, according to Fox Sports. So, I'm, you know, may not know if it's true or not, but according to Fox Sports, they're paying him a crap load of like they backing up the Brinks truck for Brock Lesnar in 2018. Do you believe that? Do, do you believe that? Um, you know, numbers are weird. Um, it's, <laughs> that, but that should be a shirt. We should yeah. make a shirt that says that. <laughs> numbers are weird. Funny numbers is what you, you would say. Um, I don't know if I believe it, but I could see it happening in the sense that they don't have Brock Lesnar under a actual deal anymore. Now they're just sort of renting him out. That's what I would say. Like if you rent a car. Wait. 
the way he likes it. Yeah, the name like a rent a car, like rent a Lesnar, rent a center, <laughs> like all this other stuff. That's how I see Brock Lesnar at this point. It's like okay, you know, I I need this. You know, I need to pop a pay per view really, really quick. And Brock Lesnar doesn't really work hard; doesn't really have to train to actually get back in the ring, as we've seen over the last year. Uh, all right, all right. We we that's like picking somebody up and hoisting them. Then you got you got to take a little bit of like. I think he's natural. Care, so. yeah. That's true, but it's it's, <laughs> it's it's. I think just in general in his life, he's just naturally good at all this other stuff, but. Uh, I mean, I could see it from that standpoint, but it just seems like a whole bunch of money for Brock Lesnar. But you know, who knows? Maybe this, maybe this last Monday on Raw was his last appearance, and this, you know, Friday, you know, coming up tomorrow for the Greatest Royal Rumble will be his last match in WWE. Who knows? That could be it. You know. Uh, I I think that like I don't know. I I, I think that. When you when it comes to Brock Lesnar, I'm just tired of the the shtick at this point. I'm just like, just get it over with. Yeah. So if they gotta pay that much just to get him, fine. Maybe he'll pop it, pop a a house at Madison Square Garden. But I don't need him on my TV screen. Honestly, I don't think that he matters to me in the in the in the in the least bit. I just don't think, and we'll get to that when we talk about uh, Greatest Royal Rumble. I just don't think I don't think he's this is gonna be the last time we see him. Honestly, I think we're going to be seeing him for a while, at least up to SummerSlam. But just very, 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 I think even less than what we see him see of him now. Um, did you get to watch last week? Because I actually haven't watched it yet on the WWE Network. Did you get to watch something else to wrestle with? I did watch something else to wrestle with. Uh, I, was. I watched about an hour of it before I kind of um, I had to do something else. I think that for our first episode and the, and the second episode should be out today uh, as we speak uh, on the WWE Network on demand. I think for our first episode, it retained a lot of what made the what made the podcast or what makes the podcast so great. I think Conrad Thompson, you know, not even to, to, to plug, to, but I got to put him over. Like He's one of the best hosts in, in podcasting right now. I think he's, he's excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and the personality in, of, of him and Bruce comes through when you're able to see them, you know. And I think that's the strongest part of the show. They did have some video and, and audio issues. Um, but I think they said on their podcast last week that they were, they were clearing some of that up. So I think that it's going to be, I, th- I think they're going to continuously get, get better and better at it. One thing I did love about that, the video version of the show is that they have the WWE ne- uh, network and the WWE's resources. So when they talk about WrestleMania 14, they're allowed to show the actual clips that they're talking about. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they show the clips and stuff like that. And I think that makes the show that much better because, you know, on their actual show, they can't really um, they can't really do, you know, or they can't really put audio clips in there you know, for, for longer than a minute and stuff like that. You can't see the visual. So I think as far as that goes, it's to me, it's something to wrestle is besides one episode that I'm still really I haven't even listened to since I you know, it came out. I, I just love the show. Easily. I haven't listened to the last couple of episodes, but I make sure. I mean, I got time at work this week. I know, and we got a bunch of things, but they they stack up and they're pretty long. So, but they're it's still just so good, just so so good. Did you tap out uh, when during the the WrestleMania nineteen episode? No, I actually love the WrestleMania nineteen episode because I think WrestleMania nineteen is a fine pay per view. Um, I'm talking about the, the Triple H, specifically the Triple H Booker T match. Ooh, um, yeah. I thought it was very weird the way they explained yeah. it. And I thought, you know, I thought him sort of, I think now the optics in 2018, they wouldn't necessarily go with even trying to justify what happened. I think you can just, they're justifying what happened then, which was, you know, the nappy hair boy comment that yeah. happened then. And by the fact that Triple H is a heel and he's just doing stuff to heal. But in terms of the optics of it now in 2018 and just the awareness of it all, it, it, it comes off very, very badly. Um, just because it comes off is just like incredibly racist. And I think we need to, I, I think just trying to justify it even ju- trying to justify it back then, it doesn't come it's all off well. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's it, all wrong. And, and I always like it took me a while. It took me a couple episodes to come back to the show uh, after Bruce Bruce's uh, explanation of 
And I don't think Bruce is a racist or anything. And I don't think we need to go around saying like MAGA Bruce or something like because yeah. to, to me, <clears throat> to be honest, it's one of my biggest quirks with the wrestling community right now is just like just randomly calling everybody MAGA. Uh, yeah, it's uh, they do it to everybody. Like it's almost like there are certain times that I want to bring up something like good that maybe Randy Orton did. Cause I'm, I'm and again, like it's 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 the same with the Kanye thing. It's yeah. the duality of everything. It's like I know these people are pieces of shit, but at what point do you kind of and and I and, and I and I'll honestly say I'm I'm guilty of the hypocrisy of it. You know, right. I'll put myself I'll put myself on the slab for that because like when I was younger, I was a huge fan of Randy Orton. But then again, when we when we move everything up to to where it is now, it's like the optics of it are different. Like Randy Orton is someone who believes in he doesn't believe in Black Lives Matter. You know, right? He doesn't believe in any of that type of stuff. But does that mean they like? Does that mean? And again, same with Kanye. Does that mean that they're not musical geniuses or he's not a, he's not really good in the ring? No, uh uh-uh. right? No, that doesn't mean that. But the thing is, again, I'm 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 putting. I'm not putting Randy Orton on the same level of, of a Kanye West, but it's the same. It's the same issue where it's like it's very blurry, and that's why it's really tough to. You got to pick and choose who you cancel, right? And it's like I don't. I would. I would be fine with never seeing a Randy Orton tweet in my fucking life. You feel Easily. me? Like, but when it when it comes to shit like that, it's like okay. So how do we? How do we? You know, I don't know. How do we? How do we navigate that murky water? But I do. I do agree that. Um, when it comes to like even the wrestling community, like it is very like, listen, the wrestling business more transparently than the music business is a shitty fucking business. Right. Not even just because not even just because of the, the way that they handle race and stuff like that, the way they handle women. I mean, we're going to we're going to talk about the, the greatest Royal Rumble where there's going to be no women on that show. I actually have a news tidbit on that because um, Triple H recently came out in a comment uh, to the independent. Um he discussed why there isn't women on the event. And I just want to sort of read a highlight on it. It says, I understand that people are questioning it, but you have to understand that every culture is different. And just because you don't agree with a certain aspect of it, it doesn't mean it's not a relevant culture. You can't dictate to a country or a religion about how they handle things. But having said that, Triple H, WWE is at the forefront of a women's evolution in the world. And what you can't do is affect change anywhere by staying away from it. While right now women are not competing in the event, we've had discussions about that and we believe and hope that in the next few years they will be. That is a significant cultural shift in Saudi Arabia. That's the best I've ever read without holding my finger to the page. But you know, like, <laughs> but you know, when people read that, it was like, oh, it's PR. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But it's, but like, okay, so what do you want? Like, and I, and I see, yeah, a lot of essentially, what do you want them to do? Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, there is an argument that like them doing this is part of, part of change. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, what's the last major WWE event you've ever held in Saudi Arabia? Like, what's the? I don't. I can't. I I can't call it. Maybe Dave, Dave Meltzer can. I, I don't think that there has ever been one. Yeah, and in, in, in a sense of just like just the introduction of okay, we're bringing this here, could start a conversation. Could start the way maybe people um, respond very you know positively to the WWE coming over. And everyone sort of be like, okay, now we get the women. I think it's a process. I think this is just the first step. And I kind of agree with what Triple H is talking about, even though it does seem like kind of a PR statement. But at the same time, it's like this is how we open the doors, how we have these conversations, how we, you know, if, you know, get into this sort of realm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, and, you know, just like I don't even know how we even got to this part, but <laughs> like I, I just the optics I, of wrestling, the optics of wrestling and things like that, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, things have gotten so different. And, and, and I think this is just the perfect time to have this conversation with what's going on in politics and in, you know, somebody that's huge and, and influential in black music. We're seeing a lot of shifts uh, just within culture. Like WWE is trying to move away from that. But even still, Linda McMahon is in Trump's cabinet. Right. They don't bring that up, though. They don't even talk about Trump being a Hall of Famer. No, they don't at all. So, you know, it's, it, it, so even they shy away from it in a way that like uh, Kanye will, will, will live in that, you know. But it's like I, I think that we, we're in a very, very, very uh, 
very odd time as far as just the social the, <clears throat> the social awareness of, of what, what people will take and what people won't take. And, and I'm not going to fight anybody that thinks that the WWE is, you know, is wrong for, for doing a show in Saudi Arabia, Arabia, you vote with your wallet on that. Yeah. But as, yeah. as, as far as, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm watching as someone who considers myself a fan and as someone who considers myself, like I want, I'm, I'm someone who, who looks to be a pundit, you right. know, I, I'm someone who looks to be a voice in this and I have to watch this show because it's being presented to me. This isn't just a house show. You know, like they, they presented this as absolutely a big show. And it is a show that from what from all I've understood, they're going to continue to do this for the next couple of years. Yeah. So we, we, we have to, you know, figure out, you know, what, where we're picking and choosing what, what side we stand on. Well, if this greatest Royal Rumble continues for a few years, I don't know, maybe it should either absolve the actual Royal Rumble or at least they should get rid of backlash because, you know, with Raw and SmackDown, we continue to sort of set up the road for Backlash, but Backlash really seems like the redheaded stepsister compared to this greatest Royal Rumble of all time. And it kind of makes me think, it's like, yo, is this is this greatest Royal Rumble, is it an actual thing or is it kind of like a glorified house show? Like, it kind of seems that way. Like, it seems like it, it it's a big event, but it also doesn't feel like... It, it has these feelings of like, oh, it's, you know, it's definitely canon. It's part of the story. It's everything. But it's just I think I'm getting my brain reprogrammed to like what WWE is doing. And in this post, you know, shake up, you know, moment in the WWE. Yeah, it is a uh, it is a very we're starting to see entertainment intersect with politics. And when it comes to we're in a world that's in a, in a very shaky place right now. I won't say it's a terrible place, but it's a very shaky place. Mm-hmm. I think that it's very important that you do keep your morals and, and, you know, everyone does. And they, and they, they kind of talk about their morals and they talk about, you know, their differences in a, in a, in a very fair way. But when it's, when it's bullshit, call it bullshit. But I, I think that the, the complaints, some of them are valid. Some of them are literally just people trying to shake the table just as, just because they don't like the WWE and what they do. Listen, they were gonna take the bag. Yeah, they were Easily. gonna they were gonna take the bag. The bag is too profound. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> the bag yeah. is way too profound. They had to take the bag. Man. It's a Come business. On. At the end of the day, it's a business. So I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta applaud Vince for, and, and Triple H for securing it. Right. But at the end of the day, business has to has to go on. The show has to go on. And and so do we. Let's talk about Raw, my brother. Let's talk about Raw. Um, listen, we had an appearance from Brock Lesnar, a possibly one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred twenty seven thousand dollar appearance. And just I think I was a very lame start to Raw. I don't really want to get too much into it because it was kind of just like Brock Lesnar talks, Roman Reign comes out to I'm gonna beat you at the greatest Royal Rumble, and literally his music hits and that's it. I'm fine with that. I, I have no interest in this match on Friday. Um, I am completely over the storyline. I It's one-sided. What yeah. more do you want me to say? Yeah. It's, it's been one-sided for three years. I think I'm more pissed off with us having this grandiose episode about it. Like it was like, <laughs> like it was like really something. And then Roman getting this shit kicked out of him. But I, yeah. I think as far as fascination goes, I have, there is no more fascination with this program. I, if, if, Roman loses, I will be, I will laugh for 24 straight hours because they, they, they to me, to me, that's it for him. I, honestly, to me, I don't even think, I, I don't know if he can be rehabbed. Can, can Roman be rehabbed? Um, no, nah, not really. I mean, I feel like, yeah, but no, because people generally don't like Roman Reigns. Um, it's not, it's not, it, it would have to be a sort of thing where, no, actually, I don't think you can recreate what he had in the shield. I don't think you can recreate no. that. I think too much things have been done. It's it's it, it'd be more detrimental for him to go backwards than it would we go forwards. It would just seem like a, a waste of time, money, and resources trying to recapture that. I would say, you know, invest your money in possibly creating another star as well, maybe side to side with Roman Reigns. And there's a lot of candidates on this roster. Um, but I don't know if we can sort of recreate what Roman Reigns was in like 2013, 2014. Like, I think it's, it's, I think it's over. Um, To me, uh, just looking forward and then looking totally at this raw, this raw fell flat. It just fell flat in general. I 
I did feel that this Raw was uh, specifically flat compared to SmackDown this week. I don't think that it was a bad show. I honestly, I still am very excited for um, this iteration of Raw. I think there was there was a lot given to people like. Uh, Drew McIntyre and, and Dolph Ziggler, who I think have done a complete 180 as far as how I feel about them, and it only took like a week. How do you feel? How do you feel about? And I and I say this: everyone's comparing this to Shawn Michaels and Diesel, and just the continuing of sort of Dolph Ziggler's <laughs> career, continuing to obviously parallel one of Shawn Michaels, um, without them being actually like. There doesn't seem to be sort of an original factor regarding Dolph Ziggler. And I think you'll be known as, I wouldn't say a poor man, Shawn Michaels, because I think Dolph Ziggler is a talented and ring competitor. But he'll essentially be like, it's, it's it's kind of like a Xerox copy in a sense, and just how his career is going. Um, how do you feel j- necessarily just about him continuing? Do you think like he needs to step out on his own and do something original? Or do you think like it, it doesn't even matter at this point? Let's just see what works and what goes. We've done, we, we've done solo Dolph Ziggler for almost three, four years at this point. I, I think this is energized. And you agree, like this is energized him to a point. Oh, yeah. where we're, like we said, we're going to give him one more chance this week on raw. Excellent promo, really good promo from Drew McIntyre. They fit. To me, they, they look they they look on screen like a really great team. They have they already have tag team moves. Like this looks to me like a great rehab for Dolph and a great introduction for for Drew. You know, I, it's not going to last. No, I think it's this is more and and to me all these you know these small guy big guy things usually are for the big guy. <laughs> yeah, um, you've seen it in the past. I mean. You look even Shawn Michaels and Diesel. I mean, Shawn Michaels had a great run, but Diesel was champion for 364 five days, like almost a damn year. Um, and and just the way these things go. But you know what? I, I still like the freshness of it all. It's something fresh. Yeah. I would I would be complaining a lot more if it was the same thing on a different show, but it's not. So I'm I'm fine with it. I would like to know a little bit more of the motivations behind it, maybe a video package. I feel like this was, if this was NXT, you would have got a video package about why they decided to do it and things. Uh, you would have got a couple of weeks of squashes too, but they, yeah. you know, Raw has, Raw has to move a little bit faster than that. Yeah, 100%. Um, also, also, this Raw, we saw the Sammy and Kevin show. I, I like it. The, their, their own in-ring sort of talk segment. I didn't fuck with it. I what? didn't like it. I didn't like it. I did not like that. Listen, there's nothing more that w- there is nothing that will make me change the channel quicker than seeing a Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens segment in 2018. What? I'm tired. Oh, I am tired. How did Neil, you like? The, how tired. did you like? How did you like the match? The match. I thought the match was the, fun. The match was fun as hell. Okay, I they proved me wrong, and that's the thing. They're gonna have to prove me wrong a lot, okay? Because here's the thing: Kevin Owens hasn't had a great match to me in about two years. Sami Zayn has been sucked into that vortex to a point where he doesn't really have great or great matches anymore either. I think and, they're both. By the way, I think they're both aware of that as well. I hope so, but I thought that their match against Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman was really, really good. I think it left me with more questions about what they're doing with Bobby and Braun than it did with what they're doing with KO and Sammy because, and I saw this floated around. I believe it was fucking the frame movement that said this on Twitter. We might be getting Roman and KO again. Hmm. That, that 10 minute headlocks, 10, 10 minute headlock sessions. I wouldn't be surprised, man. Like, um, you know, I thought the match was fun. I thought the match was fun basically because I like seeing – I think generally the crowd loves seeing large things hit things. <laughs> um, and this is 100% what you get with this match with Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. I think it makes Bobby Lashley seem a lot more funner than he probably is. Um you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still on the on the on the fence about Bobby Lashley because I know he's returned and still pretty new, but I'm still too early. Never, too, it, too early, bro. I think we need to get him in the midst of an actual program and see what's going on. But uh, you know, I like the match. I like the aftermath. I like everything. It was a great, you know, backstage segment on you know dot com with Sammy and KO, and it was just funny. But other than that, yeah, I agree. Um, they're gonna have to work hard to, you know. Do Do you see them? Do you see them doing uh, pulling the trigger on Braun and Bobby before they go to Braun and, or I'm sorry, Bobby and uh, Roman? 
Ooh, um, I think that's where we're going to me. Just the way, I, just the way it looks. I think you team, you pair Lashley with Braun and then have them kind of go at it. Uh, I, I, and I think that'd be fucking incredible. I think it's good. I think it's a, it'll be a great match. I wouldn't know who turns in this, but it's. Uh, I think that would be a phenomenal match. I think, and I mean, and they're not really doing anything with them. They're not really doing anything with anybody. I think that was a problem with Raw. Uh, <laughs> the, the, one of the one of the things they're you know the only sort of real one of the few prog- progressing moments was Baron Corbin finally appeared on Raw and he killed No Way Jose, which. I think yeah. And I, if you want to talk about somebody going nowhere, no way Jose is going absolutely nowhere. Oh yeah, but I I figured I I would always wondered how it would translate from NXT to the main roster beside it being a comedy act, and I don't even think it translated out even further out of NXT. And NXT is like really the working show uh, outside of a comedy yeah. act, so it's kind of. Uh, it's kind of weird for No Way Jose. I see tag team in his feature. Just random weird tag team <laughs> with maybe like Lance Storm or something. I don't know. Um, a Lance Storm as character. I, I'm all for it. I'm all for seeing Bobby Lashley pick up Braun Strowman in that suplex, that, that delayed oh suplex, and God. keep him in there. I would, I'll pop. dude. I pop for that. I'm rock hard. Would, Let's go. I would be. I would, that would be amazing. Um, what else did we see on Raw? We saw what happened with the women. Well, we didn't see a lot of stuff with the women. They had a big ten, uh, ten person tag on on with with the women. That was. I thought it was a solid match. I thought you know. Um, yeah, but I was, <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, I was disappointed by the ending. I think I was disappointed by the ending. Don't get me wrong. Nia Jax diving off the apron and killing like 60 women at the same time. Phenomenal. I think that was in, you know, I just think that just, I don't know. Rhonda is so in her own orbit and not in this division, even though she's supposed to be in this division. And she just kind of comes out and wrecks the division one by one. It just doesn't sit right with me. I think there, she's in the Brock Lesnar uh, category in where in which she's Brock, but she she shows up every week. Right. Um, we're obviously it's so obvious that we're running into a Natty and Ronda feud. I don't know when they pull the trigger on that, but I think logically with Ronda, you have her go against Mickey on Backlash. No, then, I, right. And then you build. Up, I mean, do you put Ronda in the Money in the Bank? Is that where the natty is that where the natty heel turned that where you pull the trigger? Shit, man. Um, do I put Rhonda in a match with a ladder? No. Um <laughs> at, the, at this stage of his career. But it's not like the women are like falling off onto like through t- tables or anything like that. I mean, that would be awesome, but they're not doing that, judging from last year's Money in the Bank match. Um But I think I don't I don't know. You know, you know it's weird. I feel like this Ronda Rousey Natalia thing. It's clearly kind of like, you know how you start a game and they're teaching you all the controls, like we were yeah. talking about on the on the lookout with um, with Perfect Legend that we we talked about sort of that opening story in Dragon Ball Z Fighters, and <laughs> it's just like to teach you all of the controls. That's what I feel like this Natty feud is. It's like okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, wrist lock here. Um, oh my god. <laughs> That's how I feel. But you know what? It worked wonders for Charlotte. I'd say that like Charlotte's career turned 180 with that match with Natalia at NXT, you know, whatever it was, the takeover, of, you know, umpteen years ago. And I think they just hope for the same with, you know, Ronda Rousey. I don't know if they'll get enough of a story out of it, but, you know, they'll certainly get a match. And I'd be cool with that. I think 90 90- the perfect person to teach Rhonda and I'm just wondering when they pull the trigger I I would stretch this all the way out to Money in the Bank and I do think she might really be in that match I still think someone from SmackDown is winning it because SmackDown always wins these types of events right (laughs) but but I I I really think that that would be a cool match for her to be in just show that she's one of the you know one of the the performers or one of the regular performers but there wasn't there wasn't a lot of movement on the women uh on the women's side this week as far as uh as far as Raw went Right, and and we we saw a few matches. Um, we saw Chad Gable versus Jinder Mahal. Chad Yo, Gable in a in a really good match. I was just gonna say in a really good match. And and they're putting over like one two three kid beat Razor Ramon, and everyone's just like relax. It's Jinder Mahal. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> he lost like last week. Like, um, but you know what? It, it's 
if they're going that direction with Chad Gable, I'm all for it. I'm surprised. I'm just happy he's not like on 205 Live or something. Uh, I think they see a lot of him, but they did a lot of weird things with uh with the with the newer wrestlers on the on the rosters this week as far as giving them really perplexing wins. And yeah, junior has been losing a lot, which means that he's probably going to win big pretty soon. Yeah, it, it it seems like it. We had a Bobby Roode versus Elias match, where I was, where I was just like, "Am I in 2011? Like, what's going on here?" Um, and Elias won. Yeah, exactly. Elias, be, dude, Bobby Roode's done to me. I think he's cooked. You know, I don't think that. I think they're preparing. You, you to be honest with you, and this may be like a, a stretch. I think they're preparing for a double turn. I think they're preparing hmm, with to turn, yeah, to turn Elias face and Bobby Roode heel. That's how I feel like it is. I feel like Bobby Roode is going to get frustrated that he cannot beat Elias, and then that sort of turns him because I, I feel like we underestimate how aware WWE is now. Whether they choose to care about what we say or not is a different story. But I do think they know the fact that um, I don't think Bobby Roode as a face is going to work on Monday Night Raw, especially when he's like, in terms of the rankings of all the faces on the roster, there's Braun, there's Balor, there's Rollins, there's, you know, Jesus, Roman, just everybody, just there's so much, there's so much competition on Monday Night Raw. I don't think he sort of can find his way to, you know, venture through that. But as a heel, he's, it's open season for him to become sort of a top star. And I think hopefully we begin to see the seeds of that moving in backlash and past backlash. Yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, I'm on, like to me, Bobby is a a theme song in a robe. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to see where these things are going in the, in the next couple of weeks. But you know, not a, not a. I thought that that I thought the gender loss was more perplexing to me than the than the rude loss because I'm like. I mean, whatever he can lose all day to me. I don't really care. I'm 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 a bigger I'm a bigger fan of, of Elias at this point. Even I mean, even he's improving a little bit in the ring. And, and I think this was the raw that a lot of people came around on too, on on one Elias and one Jinder Mahal as far as what they can really do in the ring. And I think you put them you put them next to people that can work, and it looks great. Right, one hundred percent. I feel I, like one thing I, I do, how many times did they fucking pitch or, or, or have they been promoting the greatest Royal Rumble in the past literally like two shows or 72 hours? Like they have had the commercial run all during through SmackDown. Matches. <laughs> yeah, during matches, all through like they, they were on SmackDown. I counted it. They ran through the car three times. Listen, the bag is enormous. The it's bag. profound. It's a, it's 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 the quite quite literally maybe the greatest bag <laughs> ever. <laughs> the greatest WWE greatest bag is what we're calling this event. Like, yeah, it, it's a <laughs> it quite. I don't know. It, it just feels like that. Um, it's. I wouldn't be past it. I mean, we're not even promoting backlash. Poor backlash. Whoever bought tickets for backlash. That's a expected, nothing show. Expected, That's a nothing show. I main events. <laughs> What is the main event of that show right now? Because we don't have this. The SmackDown side isn't. Isn't. I don't think the SmackDown side is going to be uh, built until the Nakamura match. No, or the Nakamura AJ match. Um, but I, they they promoted that show so fucking much. And wow, we just got through a fucking three hour show in like twenty minutes. But um, I I think that's it for Raw. Honestly, listen, yeah, let's let's move over to SmackDown because SmackDown yeah. started off with the return of my guy, the Miz. Oh boy. The Miz, oh Miz TV is back on SmackDown. He's talking, oh, the only thing I'm missing is a championship, and it's the Intercontinental Championship. So he's competing for that this Friday, this week, whenever you hear it. You probably hear it. If Tomorrow. You hear this after, yeah, if you hear this after Friday, you're cooked. Um, <laughs> but he was interrupted by quite possibly, to me, the least intimidating heel, besides him just being seven feet tall ever, Big Cass, yeah, and and he, how did you feel about now? How did you feel about this promo? Do you feel like they? I don't. I, I said yesterday uh, in the chat, are they baby facing Miz? But I, I, that was a little bit too. Uh, that was too. What's the word? Preemptive to say. But yeah, I think. What did you feel about Cass's promo here? Well, first, I think Miz is in his own sort of space where he kind of just says what he wants and they know he'll bring it back to everybody hating him or just people yeah. just hate him in general. Um, first of all, Big Cass's entrance, looking like he's modeling his first suit ever. My man came out, 
<laughs> with the jacket slung over his shoulder, like one of those like kid models, and and sort of sashayed <laughs> his way down the ramp. I, it, to me, it was very perplexing. He really looked like one of those. I can't take seriously a heel who has like dimples, which is weird to say, but it's like that is so. What? <laughs> it's a heel. That is your perplexing. That is your perplexing statement of the episode. You have one every episode. A heel with dimples, bro. Like the dimples are so like you know what it is. It is what it is. I thought Big Cass's promo was fine. I thought he did a great job of reeling the crowd in and. Uh, making them hate him, and quite honestly, if you're beating up Daniel Bryan, they're gonna hate you pretty much. I well, think. the story the story makes sense. I think uh, he he brought, he brought up that he when he got cleared the same day, uh, he got cleared the same day as Daniel Bryan did, and no one talked about him, and everyone went towards Daniel Bryan, and they they were they were rejoicing, and he just felt he he hates Daniel Bryan because he remembers when he himself was as small as Daniel Bryan is. And he wants to make sure that Daniel Bryan will never cast a shadow over him ever again. And I thought it was a tremendous promo. I thought between the layers on that promo, man. Yeah, it was, it was so, so, so good. And and I thought that for for once, I thought someone was Miz's equal and he hasn't had an equal on the mic in a while, but he looked impressed. (laughs) Yeah. One thing about Cass is that he's never been a bad promo. Like I thought that one, like we said a couple of weeks ago, that one time where we're cat where Cass was by itself and he was like doing his own thing. Like, I was feeling it like that match he had on raw when, uh, when Kevin Owens won the belt, he was excellent in that match. And I think now is the time to really, and also notice they didn't mention Enzo Amore. No, uh, of course not. He didn't, they didn't, they didn't, uh, he didn't even allude to it, but he's just rebuilding himself. And I think you get all of the big casts and the Enzo shit out the way. I think he'll be fine. And uh, they did announce on SmackDown that Daniel Bryan will be facing big casts at backlash. I think that match is going to be great. I think he, it, it, Amp said it the best. Are you ready for <laughs> Daniel Bryan to lose to Big Cass? And yeah, you know, because yeah, it, that might be, it's yeah. good. It's, uh-huh. Here's the thing. Daniel Bryan loses a lot. I don't think people realize this. Like, he loses a lot. Yeah, and it, and it really doesn't affect him. Um, and especially with this sort of injured storyline that they've got going on, I think that's just sort of setting it up for Big Cass with the, mm-hmm. with the you know, big win. You know who else lost on SmackDown by, by proxy, but still suffered their second loss? My God. Oscar. Oscar. The, how- I called the eight hey, Mills. I called this shit last week, too. When they, when they announced the match, I said, poor Becky. And somebody was like, what do you mean, poor Becky? And I was like, she's going to lose this match. And here we are. Oscar losing on an episode of SmackDown. Like, to the Iconics. She didn't, she didn't take the pinfall, but they are making the Iconics look really strong. Yeah, I mean, they have to at this point because to me, I to me their promo before it kind of fell flat. I'll just be honest with you. Um to me their their aura kind of falls flat to me. That's just me. I, I hear a lot of mixed reviews about it. I think they're great. Um I think the delivery gets them past the 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 idiocy of their writing. <laughs> yeah, I think you know what? I think it's also that there's no context to they just came up and kind of just started talking this way. I don't think there's any context to anything at all, which makes they were talking that way in NXT. Yeah, but there's no in terms of just the main roster. You introduce them to the main roster. There's seemingly like they didn't come in and start beating people up, and then it was like, oh, now we're, we hate them. They just kind of came in and started talking, and everyone's just like, you know, if you just walk in a room and started talking to somebody or just talking in general, and you know how weird and perplexing that would be. I think that's so here, here. Here we go again, Mills. Once again, second week in a row where you are shitting I'm just on. Not a, I'm not a fan of the iconics right now. I, you know what? I, I want to be a fan of them. I want to be a fan of them. I don't hate. And them. there is literally, and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a yet another parallel. Ember Moon just showed up. Sure. <laughs> Sure. She didn't say shit. We don't know anything about her. Listen, Ember Moon's strongest suit is not talking. It's, you know. No, 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 no. It's wrestling. No, no. That, that's bullshit, Meals, because you, you're shitting She's on the wrestler. personality. You're shitting on them for having personality. I'm shitting on them for their personality not being that They're good. no different. They are no different than who they were in NXT. They're the exact same character. I didn't you know. Maybe I'm I didn't sorry. really like them in NXT that much, or maybe just the smaller stage just seemed to suit them a lot more. I think they were benefited more from their backstage segments, like their little, their little like PC segments where they'd be like, you know, 
talking backstage and you know, just you know bumping into someone and, and getting in a little argument, a little tiff like that. Like that makes sense. They have a little backstage tiff. Like they're trying to be cute. It's like this mean girls thing. But them coming out and doing it to me, it just it's just weird. I don't know. Oh boy! I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, guess, I guess you didn't fuck with. Uh, I guess you didn't fuck with the uh, with Lay Cool then. Lay Cool. That's all this is. Not really? Not really. Oh, not, no. All right. Lay all cool. right. Here's what mm-hmm. I, I messed with them for that. The, I think best Lay Cool. You know what? It's probably not the best, but in just in terms of just retrospecting the optics of it all. Speaking about optics, that whole Lay Cool versus Picky James program. I thought it built up to a crescendo that was really, really strong, and then they but lost. But this, I'm not talking about piggy. No, no, no. Of course, of course, of course, of course. But I think just it built up to something. You know what? I, I'll, I'll no doubt wait and see what the iconics actually do. But to me, in this moment right now, I'm not really feeling them. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I, for for all of my my love of them and their characters, I think in ring they they've been given no favors. Uh, I didn't That's like true. the match. I didn't like the tag match at all. Um, Asuka is still very popular. I don't think she loses a lot um, crowd crowd wise from this nothing loss. But again, this it goes back to what we said uh, the week after WrestleMania or the week of WrestleMania um, when it happened. Uh, Asuka losing makes way for people like the Iconics being able to get over and not be fucking squashed and made to look stupid right. because Asuka can't lose. So it gives them momentum. And I think right now the Iconics. Even even they before they're, allowed, yeah. they're even before they're allowed to chase the belt or chase anyone, giving them strong wins against them. Like they might not be Oscar one on one, but giving them wins in tag matches and stuff like that, it makes them look good. And I, I think I think we're seeing we're seeing this the, the actual fruits of the labor of Oscar um, losing at, at WrestleMania. And and I and I love one thing that the Iconics did do was that they said they used like MMA logic where it was like they said that uh, Charlotte. Maybe. You're they, right. they, Charlotte beat Oscar, and they they allow they be they beat up Charlotte, so they're better than Oscar or something like that. And I thought that was really funny. I thought that was funny. I thought that was good. You know what? Maybe more stuff like that. We'll, we'll, uh... Oh, shut shut the hell up! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Speaking of women, we had a, a a random contract signing in the middle of a show. <laughs> we have multiple we have multiple women segments, and we also had women in men segments on Raw. And that's let me tell you, I don't think Road Dog is booking the show anymore. Let me just clarify that. You know what? I like the incorporation of I don't like it so is segregated too harsh of a word? Uh no, it's not it's not harsh. That segregated is a regular word. Yeah, it's a I think I don't like how they're so segregated away from each other, just in general, because that's just not how life works. But like you said, well, in term like you said, Naomi came out, helped um the Uso score a win over Eric Rowan of the Bludgeon Brothers. So that's the Bludgeon Brothers first. Yeah. Bludge or something on their record, um, which was it's their first. It's their first loss. It's their first singles loss. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's it's a little something. I tried. Um, we saw Charlotte Flair and Carmella with the sign that contract. I think Carmella is you know I judge. I applaud her more so from the past two years of pretty much her coming out and nothing sort of happening with the crowd. Like the crowd just kind of. Oh, it's Carmella. Whether they're supposed to hate her or love her, there was pretty much no reaction to sort of building to having this reaction. But yeah. it's just such like a tertiary character <laughs> to me, Carmella. Wait, wait, what do you mean? She's just like, I don't think she's strong enough as a character to like, I think, wow. I think. The heel move and playing her video package three times, I thought that was amazing. I thought, okay, you're yeah, getting that, that, in now. That, that's great. You're she compounding. Gets heat, man. She gets heat. Yeah, she gets heat now. She didn't before, but she gets now, and that's what I'm applauding her for. But, you know, I don't think Charlotte buys this match. I don't think – but she's probably going to lose. I think Charlotte is probably going to lose. Um, I think the Iconics are going to make sure she does. Yeah, I think it's just everyone's gonna be like it's easier to beat Carmella than it is to beat Charlotte. Um, I, I do think that I do think that Oscar's gonna win the Money in the Bank, and then I think Oscar's gonna get the title, and I think we're gonna get we're gonna get um, Oscar and Charlotte part two by SummerSlam, yeah. and let Oscar get her win, let Oscar get her win back. <laughs> yeah, probably. But, uh, unlikely. 
Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it. I thought the contract signing was really dope. I thought Charlotte kept it right to the point and showed and showed a really great fire. Um, I, I, I really, I think she's in a weird spot right now because ever since the Oscar match, she hasn't been great in the ring, but I think that she has to really do a lot of work with Carmella because she has to do a lot of work that she possibly couldn't have done with Ruby riot you know, in these, uh, back in a couple months ago. But I think there's a lot of, there's, you know, she's got a lot of work cut out for her, but I think she can do it. I, I think it's a test, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really loving her right now uh, as, as a character. Um, um, so- Two que- two quick questions before. Yeah. Uh, if you were booking, if you were Road Dog and booking SmackDown, you know, I don't think he is anymore. Or, I really don't think he is anymore. Well, if you were booking SmackDown, how do you introduce Sanity? <laughs> oh shit! I think on a show that's, thing. on a show that's two hours long, and this is possibly one of the. I mean, it's a small nitpicky part of SmackDown, but you know, we had a. We, it was a two-hour show. It was packed, even though the matches. A lot of the matches in the first hour did not last long. But I think it's them. tough. I think it's tough with them because you already look like you have a new day bar program going on. So it have to either be the Usos once again going into another tag program with weird characters, or you have them focus on one person. Yeah. They'll have to. T- who, who's the other face on this show that they could team up? Like, they'd have to either. I mean, naturally, they go against Jeff Hardy, you know, or they go against Randy Orton or something like that. Maybe both. Who knows? Um, at this point, uh, we have the club. I mean, you know, I think you know what I think it will be the new day. Um, I think the bar will set their sights on the tech. I mean, there, there's easy to shift people around in this tag team division. Or do you, or do you have Sanity come out at Backlash in the AJ match and attack AJ to cause him to lose to Nakamura, and then that that becomes a program where AJ and the club are against Sanity. I mean, that could be something, but I think you sacrifice AJ in the sense for just a feud with Sanity, which you know. And then you have, and then you have Nakamura against Brian. Fuck. No, Brian. because Brian, Brian will have either Miz or, and you can't put Miz against Nakamura. Brian, will, Brian will either have Miz or Big Cass for at least two months. Mm. Sanity's gonna be real weird because it, be weird, yeah. And then you have Joe in the mix, and he's a heel. And then you're gonna have possibly potentially have Nakamura as the top heel there, and you have Joe maybe one B to his one A. Yeah. I don't think you need to move or touch Nakamura right now where he is. He is yeah. fucking great. I think, you know, it's a lot of things that's a lot of moving parts on SmackDown, which is one of my just the issues that happened last year as well, because we also have like Rusev Day. Shout out to Rusev Day. We had a we had a Randy Orton versus Shelton Benjamin match. Shelton Benjamin won. Weird. Um <laughs> just out of the blue, you know. Um so there's a lot, there's a lot going down on SmackDown. Um well, let's talk about this main event, man. What you what you've come to talk about, and that is Not, heel, listen heel Nakamura. Listen, two three years ago, almost three years ago, we wanted a Nakamura that we haven't always gotten. And again, I'll I'll toot the horn on myself. I've been guilty of being hypocritical about telling people to wait and see, and and making it more about just basically his entrance than anything. And I, and I, and you know, there's always not more as fans that say, wait and see, wait and see, wait and see. You're going to see what we see in this guy. This is the new Japan Nakamura, you know, like this is the cocky asshole fucking beat your fucking ass Nakamura. He has a new theme song that I think is tremendous in the, in the, in uh, Corey Gray's uh, response or explanation for it is that he doesn't want the crowd singing along to his theme song anymore. So he made it Japanese. Oh, How fucking awesome. great is that? That was amazing, bro. I loved it. I loved it. I love the theme, by the way. I think everyone loves the theme, but there's no way I'm singing the damn theme. <laughs> oh, no. I like I can't, but I, I'm definitely going to be fucking nodding my head to that shit. But the, the big part that I thought was tremendous about the, the, uh, the main event was Carl Anderson taking uh, the Kinshasa for AJ Styles and then uh, Nakamura making AJ watch as he gives uh, Carl Anderson yet another Kinshasa. That was, it was tremendous. I think it, just the fact that he took out, he took out the entire club by himself. I mean, yes, you know. this is what, this is what we've been waiting for. Am, am I wrong? 
this is what, no, you're right. You're completely right. Um, I think it's just a tremendous job. Um, and I'm sure we'll get to the greatest Royal Rumble and our predictions on that. But it's just it's a if anything had a solid build this week towards that pay-per-view, it's been this. Yes, uh, this. I mean, I'd, I'd say that I'll, I'll go ahead and say uh, that, that Roman and Brock have, have had a pretty good build. I mean, there's, there's no it's going to be a big match regardless, even if we don't have any interest. But I'm I'm very interested in, in seeing uh, the Nakamura AJ Styles WWE Championship match. Um, let, Let's do something different with our predictions for uh, Greatest Royal Rumble, because I, I just I don't think we need to like. There's no way to prognosticate this <laughs> any yeah. larger than this because I don't know where where anything's gonna go. Uh, this is one show that we're going in not not blind, but we're going in as like as far as like content goes. We're not sure where this takes anything. After yeah, Friday. I know it happens tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm literally waking up to watch it at eight o'clock in the morning. I was, no, 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 no. It's not tomorrow. It's Friday. Today's today's Wednesday. Well, you know, when the show comes out, you know, I was oh, trying to be, right, right, you know, I was right. trying to be, you know, SmackDown's taped on Tuesday, but it airs on Thursday. You dig? Like, come on. People think, they don't think we're SmackDown over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let, let's go through the card really quick. And, and I'll, do, I'll name the match and we'll both say our winners. Sure. Undertaker versus Rusev. Undertaker. Undertaker. Easily. Do you think, think it'll be a good match? Um, No. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. Uh, John Cena versus Triple H. Oh God! Can the John ring Cena. explode? Um, Triple H. Uh, can the ring explode? And Saudi Arabia meals? What is wrong with you? Oh, oh, wow, you you said it, not me. Um, Triple H. I'll go with Triple H. Uh, I'll go John Cena. Uh, Cedric Alexander versus Kalisto. Oh God. Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander. This was a, the Kalisto uh, opponent, uh, as, or his opponent, his opponent being Kalisto was decided on 205 Live last night uh, in a gauntlet match. It it's was really crazy. like a rotating set of like number one contenders on that show. It's like, okay, now it's Kalisto's turn. Buddy and, Murphy's winning it. He's winning it. Uh, I've won it probably in two weeks. I don't know. He'll, he'll, he's going to win it. He's going to um, drop down to below 205 and, you know. Yeah, I think the reason why he can't go, I, I'm going to be 100. Like, I feel like the reason he can't go is because he's not really a citizen of the United States anyway. Mm-hmm. So he probably he probably has to get papers to go to Saudi Arabia, too. But I just wish they would just say that. But I think they didn't realize that until after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, you got your papers? Papers? <laughs> oh, we're actually go- – the cruiserweights are going on this trip? <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Let me go. Oh, wait a minute. You can't go? Oh, oh my God. Fuck. Uh, okay, so Bludgeon Brothers versus Usos. Bludgeon U- Brothers. Usos. 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 Bludgeon Brothers. I mean, I, if you want to do it, I, I, if you want to have them on the on the card on Backlash, you would have that rematch. I think you could have the rematch anyway, because it's not like Naomi's going to come out on this damn show. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. Uh, That's cruel. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I'll still say Usos. Um, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy versus The Bar. Wyatt and Matt Hardy. Yeah, Wyatt and, Wyatt and Matt Hardy. Uh, I think Cesar and Sheamus stay on SmackDown. Jeff Hardy versus Jinder Mahal. Now, this is interesting. Is it? I, th- it I, think, is. But I think with the amount of times Jinder's lost in the past two weeks, I think he's winning this match. I think everyone's wondering, all right, if one wins, the other title switches, right? So it kind of just yeah. becomes a sort of, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Jeff Hardy. I'm going to go out on let me say Jeff Hardy. So you're so you better retain that same energy in, in a couple matches, okay? Oh yeah, oh no doubt. Uh, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I think AJ wins by DQ. AJ wins by DQ. You read my mind. He's yeah, definitely AJ wins by, nuts. They're, they're not giving away. Yeah, they're they're doing the nut shot stuff. Are we really waiting for AJ to wear a cup and then uh, foil Nakamura and then like that yes. be the way Nakamura? We're waiting for that, right? Yes, okay. easily. Yes, yes. Um, it's happened before. <laughs> ladder match: Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe versus The Miz. Um, I guess considering I picked Jeff Hardy, I would have to pick Seth Rollins. Yeah, Seth Rollins. I love The Miz. I would be amazed if The Miz won. I would be ecstatic. But I'm going uh, with Seth Rollins. Nice. He doesn't need it. Uh, I, th- I think they do need to get Finn Balor uh, direction and also Samoa Joe a, a direction uh, going forward. Um, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Uh, listen. Brock Lesnar. I'm going to keep it 100. Yeah, I'm going to go with Brock, too. <laughs> I'm going to go with Brock. 
Rock. I literally think all the champions retain because to me, this is a house show. <laughs> I don't know. I think we might see one of those championships. I mean, hands, man. If they they're going to do, do they're going to do one of them. I mean, the bag is just so incredible. It's the greatest bag. WWE greatest bag. This is the name of this pay per view. Big bags, yeah. Yeah. bigly bags. We've got it. <laughs> We've got it. Wow. So, uh, greatest Royal Rumble, the actual greatest Royal Rumble match. Oh my god! Um, Fifty motherfuckers in this match. Fifty, brother. And you know how many they've announced? One, two, three, four. Not five, all of six, them. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty-six. They've announced twenty-six. Oh my god. Um, they removed Kane, so it was like, which is like, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think this is an opportunity not to give it to someone who really needs it. It's a trophy. Jesus Christ. It's a fucking trophy. They just gave away one of those last week. Like, it's a... Uh, <laughs> like, it's a... Uh, let's go with Braun Strowman. If you go with Braun, I got to go the other way. So, um, I'll go Daniel Bryan. Okay. Daniel Bryan throws out big cast. Daniel Bryan throws out big cast. Oh, Okay. Big Cass is definitely throwing out Dan O'Brien. You are on Krenak. Nah, I think I think you I think you have him in the final four. That's gonna be that that must but well the show's so long that I feel like a lot of the people that were on the show earlier will probably be well rested by the time the, the actual rumble starts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, stretched out all this other stuff. I mean, I don't know how they're planning to possibly have fifty people in one ring. I mean the by having this as a Royal Rumble logistically and and, and you could at some point have 49 people in the ring at once. But, you know, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll, I'll go Daniel Bryan. And if not Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns. Okay. So, yeah, that, that, that's where we're at as far as the, the greatest Royal Rumble. Do you think it's going to be a, a good show? I, I, I'm, and, I, and I know that, like, we, you know, we're not really, like, analyzing this but like we have backlash next week that we have to analyze and i think that's gonna be i think everything will be settled by then but we can actually analyze these shows and figure out what the fuck is about to happen right. even though we're gonna have, even though we're gonna have like multi-brand uh brand matches where it's like two brands against each other but we'll, we'll see we'll see i mean backlash is gonna be a cluster you know mess of a show but i'm here for it nonetheless uh, anything else that happened in, the, in this week in wrestling deals? Um, nothing that I want to talk about. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, there was a New Japan show, but I, I thought that was—it's not really worth talking about. We did—we did touch on the Impact pay per view, and one thing I will say, regardless of what, how you feel about Impact, I thought the pay per view was really fun. I thought the main event was really good too. I, Austin Aries and Pentagon really did their thing, and I, I really did like the Sue Young match—the uh, the women's match with, with Sue Young in it. Listen. Sue so Young does numbers. Um, that's, it for, that's it for this episode of the A Show. If Mills is if Mills is opposed to anything, you have anything problematic you want to say before we leave? Nah, I'm kind of hungry. Oh my gosh, that's problematic itself. You don't eat. What, what kind of a man eats anyway? Oh my god, you just ate on the beginning of the show. <laughs> and, and, I, and I have to thank you for being so long winded because it allowed me to eat pizza and and really get all of my lunch because I'm eating the latest lunch ever. But I also want to just thank you guys for being so supportive of RNC Radio for the past week. I mean, I, I think that you know this has been one of our biggest weeks. We had a, a playlist for Rap City that came out that's doing numbers, my friend. And we also have another playlist. Uh, that is in homage, in homage of Meek Mill uh, being released this this week or, or yesterday uh, at this time, and and just shout out to Meek Mill for being released. Big Facts. moment, big Emer- moment. Emergency playlist that we did. We literally did it that day. It was handled in three hours or so. It was really really good. Um, shout out to the RNC family of just putting that all together on such a short notice. And shout out to Meek Mill, whose release seems to be like the only shining light this week in a week of <laughs> just things that happened of, of bullshit let's be clear uh but all, as always you can always follow rnc radio at rnc radio live on twitter where we will have all of our playlists and we'll have all of our podcasts we have rsbn coming up this week with all of the playlists uh, not playlists but i'm sorry but all of the sports news that you need from jeff and my man mark my man mc and we also have be, be on mark watch this week because <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, the Philadelphia 76ers are, are have not. You know they have beaten the Miami Heat. So if I if if there was any RSPN episode to tune into, 
it's definitely this week. So just just hearing Mark try to be calm is going to be fucking hilarious. You have listen to you have to watch it or hit, listen to it just because of he, that. He's going to have to learn to trust the process because he has at no point at the, <laughs> he has no <laughs> he has no other option at this point. A hundred percent. And we also have the Perfect Play podcast uh, with my man Huey who is going to be interviewing someone. I never know. He just gives me the episodes. I never know what he's going to talk about to the day before. So you'll see what, we'll see what happens on that when that pops up. And I know that we were supposed to have an episode of RNC radio with myself and Josh Pease, but Josh Pease is the most elusive man in America. We will see where he's at uh, by next week, but it's, it's going to happen. Trust me. It's, it's hard to pin that guy down. Really, it really, really is. Yeah, he's he is he's disappeared. I, I don't think we've seen him. How many times have we seen him in the chat this week? I don't know, man. But it's, I don't know. I really don't. He's a busy I, guy, but we, we have uh, we, we definitely have a, a bunch of guests coming up for that show as well. So stay tuned, to RNC Radio, for all of the latest news and everything else going on for the A Show. This is Justin, and I and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Mills. When we say thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. Happy Rooster Day. <laughs>